So, you guys wanted more from this game. I had a feeling I'd be covering this topic sooner or later, so let's get to it. <laughs> Yes, the skills are indeed wonderful powers in this chaotic game, and with over twice as many as the perks, they're gonna give me a lot to talk about. So much so that I'm splitting the video into two parts. With this list, I'm gonna be ranking the skills based on usefulness, effectiveness, how fun they are to use, and overall, mileage. Once again, this list is solely my opinion, and there are countless ways it can be rearranged through each person's mileage. And this can go without saying, but this is easily the most difficult list I've made, so please respect the amount of time I put into narrowing down the choices and writing my opinions on each one. So with all that said, let's begin this mammoth list. Before the making of the perks list, I didn't think there was such thing as a garbage skill. Then one day, I unlocked the bubble shield and I completely forgot about it up until I was using the magic dice for the aforementioned video. The bubble shield just doesn't work. It's not as useless as last trick because it at least tries to help you survive, the keyword being try, but it totally fails because it doesn't actually protect you from explosions. Here's how the perk goes. Press F to inflate the shield, stand still, and take tons of damage from exploding bombs the shield is meant to repel. If you were immune to bomb damage when inside the shield, it still wouldn't be great since Super Bomb Survival is a game where you really don't want to stand around 60% of the time, but it would be decent since it'll offer some good protection and it'll actually do its job. You know something's wrong with a skill when a joke skill is more useful and efficient, but we'll get to those later. Bottom line, the bubble shield sucks, don't use it. I had such a hard time deciding whether this or Bubble Shield was worse. While I consider the Super Magnet to be the most useless skill in the game, I put it above Bubble Shield because that skill aggravated me more. But still, this skill is pretty crap. All it does is pull debris and sometimes bombs into a pile really slowly while you stand there thinking, wow, I could be using so many better stuff than this. You could use it to fish out a coin from the lava, but why go for all that effort just for that? Oh, but there could be a heap of burning parts blocking your path. If you had the misfortune to come across that while being chased by missiles, stop wasting time and jump over the burning bricks. Trust me, you're better off risking 5 damage than waiting for the magnet while the missiles close in on you. Overall, this skill is just a big waste of time. As I've said before, vertical mobility is invaluable in this game. Even if you don't have any perks that help you in that regard, there's still ways you can get around stuff to reach certain areas of the map. This makes the spring's usefulness limited at best, and practically null at worst. Not only is this perk redundant in almost any situation, it's not very effective since you bounce in a straight line all the way to the top of your jump. It's pretty hard to take this perk seriously. Whenever I encounter a spring, I just ragdoll onto it and see where I end up. But even then, the fun only lasts a few seconds every time even if it gets tipped over, and you'll often get interrupted by bombs anyway. Even when I first saw it, I thought pickaxe looked pretty bland, and that was back when you could buy the skill upgrades, and using it today, it gave as much as I expected. This skill is so boring. It's really slow, so it's terrible for making escapes, and the drop rate of items is so low that you'll be lucky to get more than 5 coins in a round. Plus, being inside the minuscule mineshaft you made gives you little room to navigate, so you run the risk of getting cornered by bombs. The only use I can think of for this is challenges, but even then, there are better and less boring ways to fulfill their goals. Huh, can't believe I got through that without making a Minecraft reference. I used to run this skill a lot when it was new because I thought it was pretty fun, and it still sort of is, but I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty bad skill. True to the classic gag it represents, you leave a banana peel, other players walk on it and they trip. That's it. And the payout is laughably low considering it's a drop skill that does no more than trip players. The banana might be good for a laugh, but in the end, it's really nothing more than a joke item. Though not all joke items have to be bad, but we'll get to that later. Banana is terrible, but it is still a joke skill. Spicy turkey is terrible, but it isn't a joke skill. At least, I don't think it is. I really don't remember getting any mileage out of this skill. While it does deal damage to other players on contact, which automatically puts it above the banana, the payout is abysmal, and the easy-to-kick-around part of the description is, to put it kindly, an exaggeration. 
The Turkey is basically a larger but lighter TNT crate that doesn't explode, and we all know how well that moves across rough terrain. All of that is what puts it below the other skills of its kind, though I will admit the gameplay I recorded here is pretty bad, but my point still stands. Pizza is good, poison is bad, and annoying. Put them together and what do you get? Poison pizza. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna call this skill from now on. And wouldn't you know it, it's another food-based drop skill. The poison pizza can do a little more than the banana and turkey, but it's not much. If you find someone unlucky, oblivious, or dumb enough to walk over it, it creates a gas cloud that'll net you 10 points, if you're lucky. These drop skills really aren't getting much love, but there is one down the line that's decent. Oh look, another drop skill. Wow, four in a row. But instead of a food, we have a coin. A coin that explodes. This has probably the best payout of the drop skills, if not for the fact that it's too slow and obvious. I understand that this would be a cheap skill if the coin was identical to the natural ones, but this is not gonna fool anyone with an hour and a half of playtime. That said, it's still better than the other drop skills I've listed because it's more effective against players and it has a reasonable payout. I promise this will be the last drop skill for a while. I live! With this next skill, you can probably tell that I'm not a fan of skills that require you to practically stand still to get effective usage. Case in point, the platform. You summon your big checkered salami slice, stand on it, and watch other players do their thing while you're basically a sitting duck to missiles. That said, I do know a couple of good uses. If you're fast enough, you can use it to block a nuke and escape, and if you're at the edge of a tunnel, you can gain some extra ground, unless you're running double jump or wings. The platform has legitimately good uses, but they're just too few and far in between. Back in the day, the pumpkin bomb was a huge annoyance because of its large blast radius and short fuse time. That seems to have been nerfed if I'm not mistaken, because I've rarely had any hassle of it since the big game change, but it's definitely the case when you weaponize it. Most of the bomb skills are pretty unreliable, but the pumpkin bomb is barely usable. The bomb starts out invisible and hides away for 10 seconds before it comes out, so you have to predict where players will be in that time. Easier said than done. If it wasn't for the large blast radius, this skill would be downright unusable. Even then, the other bomb skills are just better. And the award for the most underpowered skill goes to... Self-Destruct! Once upon a time, this skill was pretty good, but then it was drastically nerfed. The ability it offers is good, create an explosion that damages other players, and it gives you a lot of points. So what's the downside? You take 20 damage. That doesn't sound like much, but as little as two uses can effectively cut your survivability in half. And that's not even taking into account the delay combined with the speed reduction. More times than not, you're putting yourself in more danger just to use it. Like take a look at this. I was stuck in this pit for a dangerously long amount of time with low health and a bomb person out for my blood. The only reason I ended up here in the first place was because I was using this skill and I couldn't resist picking this player. Oh, and it's completely useless when you have hardcore enabled. Would it not hurt just to lower the self damage by 5? Also reduce the delay time as well, then it just might return to its former glory. And oh my god, I just got damaged by 3 last trick bombs and I'm not okay with that. This perk has betrayed me! The ability of Blast Force isn't as good as Self-Destruct, but it doesn't have any crippling downsides either. That said, I've never been a fan of this skill. As I've said before, getting flung across the map rarely leads to trouble, so it's pretty worthless against players. It is better against bombs, especially the slow-moving missiles, but there are better things to do than tossing around bombs you didn't spawn. And that's about it, really. Nothing else to say, this skill's just so boring. I'm generally not a fan of the Airstrike slash Meteor skills, and in my opinion, Ice Meteor is the weakest of the lot. One thing most of these skills have in common is that they're really slow, so getting players with them is hard, and, if none of you know already, I consider Freezing to be one of the weaker effects in the game. Seriously, I can't remember the last time I've taken damage while frozen, but I digress. Don't expect most of the other Death from Above perks to be much higher up. In my eyes, the squid is among the most harmless enemies in the game. Getting ink darkens your screen while reducing your field of vision. 
How threatening. But as a skill, it's decent enough if you just want to annoy people with its visually impairing effects, I guess. And it is pretty easy to use, but so are the other status effect skills, which all have better effects. Still, it's rare to find someone who's been inked nowadays. I really don't care for the new RNG system. Besides, bloopers are just better for this job. The Fire Meteor might not be as cool to use as the Ice Meteor, but it can do a little more in PvP. When it hits the ground, it burns parts in a fairly small range, but it can still deal damage to unaware or unattentive players, so you don't have to worry too much about actually hitting players. But there are still better skills in this category, and this isn't even the best fireball in the game. We'll get to that soon, though. I don't even remember this skill being in the game, and I kinda wish it stayed that way because this is basically a worse version of the bomb skill. It gives the same amount of points per hit as the normal bomb, so its longer fuse time means you'll probably be scoring less with this. Its egg shape also makes its roll unpredictable, though that could also serve as an upside. I'd say more about this, but I'm saving it for the normal bomb skill. I just realized, anything that emits poison clouds are annoying because they block your path, unless you're willing to take damage. But when you weaponize them, getting points for causing damage to players is hard. Toxic Strike is better than Poison Pizza because you don't strongly rely on player stupidity, unless you take it for laps. But like the other airstrike slash meteor skills, it's so slow, so scoring is not much easier. A small upside that all poison skills share, however, is that they do cover a decently wide area, so it's a bit harder to avoid than the fire meteor. And now we have the vanilla airstrike. This is a little better than most of the others, simply because it gives the highest base score for damaging players. It may not have the range of Toxic Strike, but if someone was unlucky or foolish enough to walk into the gas cloud, you pretty much never earned as much points as you can get from Air Strike. There is still one unique relative skill that I've yet to cover though. The Foot Bomb would be a fun skill to use, but it has a couple of problems that make using it frustrating. The hit registration is very sensitive, so unless you back away the moment you kick it, you're likely gonna kick it twice, which, more times than not, significantly throws off your aim. Actually, the range in general can be pretty inconsistent. I'll take the Soccer Bomb any day. They're cooler and more fun to use. What? While I stand by saying that staying still half the time is bad, Ice Tower does have a mildly effective use beyond what it's intended. Unlike the platform, this actually gives you elevation, which is good for reaching higher places fast, though it can only go so far. Still, it's better protecting you from bombs than platform, another small one-up, but missiles are still a problem. No one's safe from missiles. This is another skill that I forgot about. The Spooky Jump serves as a weaker version of Super Jump, but it leaves behind a faster but weaker Pumpkin Bomb. That sounds pretty good on paper, but the problem is that those are two completely different skills. When you're trying to scare people with it, the Super Jump ability becomes practically useless since you don't really plan on using it to reach higher places, and if you're using the Super Jump ability for its intended purpose, why not just use the normal Super Jump? I will give it some credit though, it's more fun and usable than the regular Pumpkin Bomb, but that's not saying much. Mines are generally better than airstrikes and meteors. They might be easier to see, but they're faster and cover more area, and because of that, Poison Mine is the best of the poison skills. The points it gives you still isn't great, but it at least does its job more easily. Plus, even if players are standing around but are not oblivious to threats, throwing one of these can scare them away, which some people may get enjoyment out of. Confusion grenades are a bit of a killjoy. You're probably having the time of your life using whatever skill you have when all of a sudden, boom! This stupid thing disables your skill for what feels like forever. So imagine how devilish this is when you weaponize it. It's surprisingly not as fun as you'd expect. New players probably don't know how to use their skills effectively, and good players likely know how to survive without their skill, so it usually doesn't cause that much grief. At least, not as much as you'd like to think. Still, it's pretty annoying to have your favorite skill inactive at the worst time, and it's a decent skill if you just want to be that one asshole on the server. 
Remember in the foolhardy segment of my perks list when I regarded the black hole generators as the most annoying bomb type? Well, I completely take that back. Trip mines are way worse. If you're unlucky enough to get caught in their effect range, 80% of the time you will get stun locked. These have caused more of my recent deaths than anything else in the game. So yeah, it's nowhere near as bad when you weaponize it because of the long cooldown, but it does retain its annoyingly long range. Once again, good enough if you just want to troll people. It's basic, it's mundane, it's none other than the bomb skill. With this skill, you drop a high-pressure bomb and hope it rolls towards someone. Simple? Yes. Effective? Well, that depends. If you're lucky enough to find unattempted players or just good at predicting players' movements, then the payout is fine. If neither is the case, it still gives more than most of the other skills I've covered already. It is technically one of the better bomb skills, but the ones further down the list are just more fun to use. It's questionable whether or not it's as effective as the bomb, but the stealth mine offers a playstyle that makes it more interesting. Like the pumpkin bomb, you plant your mine that disappears and you wait. Unlike the pumpkin bomb, you have control over when it detonates, so if you see someone run past its location, BAM! They take damage at the single press of your F key. It's funny and satisfying enough that it's practically worth going through all the trouble to pull it off. Otherwise, you can just plant it in front of an oblivious player and detonate it as soon as it arms. It's more effective, but the proper way is more fun. Even if I don't consider it the most practical effect, freezing players is kind of fun. And mines are pretty fun to use too, so the freeze mine isn't half bad. This thing can cover a large area of place correctly, which makes getting other players much easier than the meteor. It really is satisfying to freeze three players with one mine. The one thing that kinda holds it back is the payout. Unless you're lucky enough to find a server full of oblivious players, you won't be scoring many points with this. While stun nades are probably the least annoying status effect bombs, they are still good at giving people a bad time in skill form. With this skill's blast, you can make it harder for players to escape bombs, especially missiles, and make them easier targets for other players' skills. Think the tank perk, but way slower, without the health bonus, and less avoidable. But you can climb stuff. All of these status effect skills are good for trolling with, but there is still one more that we'll get to in the next part. I've seen this used quite a bit before I use it to get footage. I thought it seemed pretty annoying given its speed and angle, and under the right circumstances, it kind of is. I'm sure you all know by now how annoying missiles are in this game. They follow you wherever you go, and they just refuse to detonate 90% of the time. <coughs> this one plays a different game. You pick a spot for it to lock onto, and it'll fly straight at it quickly at a random angle. While its areas of use are limited, the sheer enjoyment you get from hitting players with an annoyingly fast missile from nowhere is worth it. Now this is a good example of a technically good skill that I didn't really get any mileage out of. The warp skill's ability is to save your skin from a potentially fatal situation. When used at the right moment, it can mean the difference between life and death. The one problem? It's boring. Once you set up your warp zone, you basically have to wait until you find yourself in a predicament. This becomes more apparent the more skilled you are at the game. Contrary to the gameplay footage here, I really don't take this seriously. It's fine if you can't escape sticky situations, but if you know how to handle those, it's a small convenience at best. A drop skill that's both effective and fun to use? That's a first for this list. I remember having fun with the bear trap. The way players get sucked into its grasp when they touch it is always fun to watch. Plus, taking a page out of the Stealth Mines book, it's easier to use than the other drop skills because of its transparency. Looks like we're getting to the good skills now, but those will have to wait since we're at the halfway mark now. I hope you've all enjoyed the list so far and stay tuned for part 2. Bameworth out.